Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us again talk about the different types of acquired immunity. Now before this we spoke about the two types of immunity that is innate immunity and acquired immunity. Now let us see what are the types of acquired immunity. Now based on the mediator, acquired immunity are of two types. What do we mean by mediator? So we will see that very soon. Now based on this, there are of two types that is humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity. That means the cell which actually acts as the mediator in the process of immune response. Now we saw that there were two types of cells which are involved in the process of immune response. What are they? One is the B cells and the other one is the T cells. Okay, so the type of immunity which is mediated by antibody, that is which is all controlled by antibody production. So whenever antibody production comes into picture, which type of lymphocytes are going to play a role? Yes, it is the B lymphocytes. So this type of immunity is called humoral immunity. What is the meaning of humoral? The word humor is derived from fluid. Now, you would have heard of the terms aqueous humor, vitreous humor, the fluid-like regions of your eye. So, humor is actually a fluid and blood is a fluid. So, these antibodies are produced in the blood. So, that is where it got its name as humoral immunity. So, this immunity is all about antibodies. The immunity which is being provided by antibodies which are produced by the B cells. That is called humoral immunity. So B cells play a very important role in the process of humoral immunity and the second type is cell mediated immunity. So this type of immunity is mediated by the T cells. So it is often abbreviated as CMI, cell mediated immunity. As I mentioned just now that the T cells, however, they do not produce antibodies themselves, but they can recognize antigens which are present on the surface of infected cells. They can stimulate the B cells to produce antibodies. They can also stimulate the other neighboring T cells. So this type of immunity is called cell mediated immunity. So here in this type of immunity antibodies are directly not involved because in this case if you see it is all about activating other T cells, activating other B cells. So more B cells and T cells get produced. So the antibodies is the next step. So there we reach to humoral immunity. So here no antibodies only the T cells are involved. So this type of immunity is called cell mediated immunity. So activation of T cells, phagocytes, etc. These are all part of cell mediated immunity. Now as I said, T cells often stimulate other cells. Now phagocyte again is another type of cell which can actually engulf the antigen. So it can actually engulf the foreign particles. So these type of immunity fall under cell mediated immunity. Now we will talk about yet another two types of immunity that is active and passive immunity. So based on how antibodies are formed in the body, acquired immunity is of two types. Now previously we saw based on the type of mediator, who mediates or who controls the process of immunity. Based on that it was of two types, humoral and cell mediated immunity. Now based upon how the antibodies are being formed in the body, they are again of two types. What are they? Active immunity and passive immunity. So what is active immunity? In active immunity, the antibodies are produced in the host body when exposed to antigen. So that means that the main part here is the antibodies are produced inside the body. So whenever antigens are exposed to the body, antibodies will get produced inside the body. So let us try to understand what happens in active immunity. Now these antigens to which the body is expe uh, exposed, what are these antigens? These antigens can be either living or they can be dead also. Now once these antigens enter inside the body, so the body encounters 
these antigens as a result production of antibodies happen inside the body the b cells start producing antibodies but this process takes time to produce sufficient antibodies it will happen slowly so it takes time to give its full effective response so as a result what happens sometimes if the first attack is a real attack first attack of the antigen if it is a real attack then what happens the person suffers from the disease because the antigen becomes successful in creating the infection but if the first attack is not a real attack maybe the first attack is being caused by vaccination where deliberately microbes are introduced in very small amount in the body so in that case since the microbes are introduced in very small amount so they will not cause any disease but still the body will remember that particular antigen because the b cells the memory b cells will remember them so that next time when there is an attack they will be able to fight against them in a better way so this is how active immunity takes place so it is obviously a slow process because as i mentioned before that the production of antibodies will not happen just at this will not just happen at the spur of a moment it will take its own time to give its full effective immune response so this is about active immunity now let us see what is passive immunity so in this case the antibodies are not produced in the body rather ready made antibodies are injected into the host body so antibodies are not getting the production part is not taking place inside the body some antibodies from outside are being injected into the body now these antibodies are against some specific antigen but this process is a relatively fast process because you directly introduce those antibodies inside the body so immediately the antibodies will start performing their job so they will start fighting against the antigens so this is going to be a fast process so let us take some examples for example if you if you look at the examples of the vaccination process where i i told you right that there is a process where a deliberately a small amount of microbe is inserted into the into the body so that the body recognize it the body also produces some antibodies against it so that is active immunity because the antibodies are being produced inside the host body now when we talk about passive immunity it is something like this let us take the example when a person is already suffering from a disease the person already got infected with a particular disease right but now in order to save that person what do we do the ready made antibodies are injected in the form of injections so as soon as those antibodies enter inside the body they start fighting against the antigens and help to cure that person so that is passive immunity so let us look at some examples of both active and passive immunity now both active and passive immunity can happen naturally or it can be made to happen artificially so we will look at examples of both natural and artificial active and passive immunity so first we will talk about active immunity that is natural active immunity now by now all of you know what is natural what is artificial something which happens in by on its own in nature that is natural something which is like made to happen that is uh, man made or artificial so natural active immunity example would be a person who has suffered from a disease once do not tend to get it again now you would have observed this for example it has been observed that a person who has already suffered from hepatitis a virus so they do not generally tend to suffer from hepatitis a once again why that's because when the first time the virus attacked so the first time the antibodies could not be prepared quickly by the body so the virus was successful in its attack but the next time when the same virus attacks what happens the body now remembers that particular virus so the body is going to produce more and more antibodies and attack the virus in such a way that it will not be successful in its attempt to infect the body so the person person generally do not suffer from uh, many diseases twice because once that disease has occurred their antibodies have already been prepared inside the body so this is called natural active immunity because naturally the immunity has developed inside the body so we did not inject anything we did not do anything artificially it, it all happened on its own 
The next is artificial active immunity. So here what do we do? Now whenever it is active immunity, that means the antibodies will be produced inside the host body. So you see in this case also the antibodies are produced inside our body. So in this case also antibodies will be produced inside our body but what will cause the antibodies to be produced that is going to be artificial like in the first case the person suffered from a disease so it happened naturally nobody forcefully injected the pathogen inside the person but in this case the pathogen is forcefully injected into the person and then the antigen once it is introduced into the body the antibodies will get produced now in this case proper care is taken that the pathogen is introduced in extremely low dose a very small amount of pathogen is introduced so that it is not harmful to the person so that it does not cause that disease in the person so vaccination of a smaller dose of harmless version of a disease so the pathogen which is introduced which is it, it is in very small amount or it is in an inactivated form so that the person that do not end up suffering from that disease so now that very small dose also will cause the body to produce the antibodies now with this the body did not suffer from that disease but the body is ready to fight when that actual attack occurs so vaccines are available against many diseases like flu cholera hepatitis a so all these vaccines are available and they should be uh, taken by a person quite beforehand so once you take these vaccines the possibility that you will suffer from these diseases get minimized to a large extent now natural passive immunity now whenever we talk about passive immunity now the antibodies are not going to be produced inside the body so it is going to be injected from outside so natural passive immunity that means here it is passive immunity so antibodies will come from outside the body but it will not be injected it is not going to be an artificial process then let us see how it can happen one best example is the antibodies which are received from mother's milk or placenta. Now for a newborn baby, now the newborn baby feeds on the mother's milk and the mother's milk, the initial mother, mother's milk especially, it is very much rich in antibodies. So when the baby feeds on the milk, the antibodies are received along with the mother's milk. So in this case, you see it is passive immunity because the antibodies are not being formed inside the body of the baby. It is being formed in somewhere outside, that is the body of the mother. So it is passive immunity, but at the same time, it is not forceful injected so it is a natural process the baby will feed on mother's milk that is a natural process and during this process itself the antibodies will get transferred inside the baby's body so this is one example of natural passive immunity another example would be in case of a pregnant woman when she is carrying a small baby in her womb the baby is connected to the mother through placenta now there also the antibodies are transferred from the mother's body to the baby through the placenta so that is also an example of passive immunity because the antibodies are not formed inside the baby's body so the baby is receiving the antibodies from outside so this is another example of natural passive immunity now we are left with artificial passive immunity so this is like forcefully injecting antibodies ready made antibodies into the body so antibodies are received through injections now let us take the example of rabies that is the dog bite so when a dog bites somebody what happens do you have enough time that uh, that now, when the dog bites a person, that toxic, that toxin or that poison or the antigen is introduced inside the body. Now, the body will start producing antibodies. But do we have enough time in that emergency situation that we can let the body to produce antibodies at taking its own sweet time? We do not have that much time. So, what do we do? We inject or through injections, we forcefully insert or introduce the antibodies inside the person so once the antibodies are introduced it is a faster process it immediately start fighting against the antigens so this is an example of artificial passive immunity so i hope by with these examples you are clear what is active immunity and what is passive immunity thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.